Hi, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 181B. I'm Cam, this is Julie. Yes. Kind of got a little excited there. <laughs> <laughs> You're going way out ahead of yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are in our second week's second week talking about the Acts of Thomas. Okay. All right, so we're going to continue with that. Um, last week we discussed how he was sold by his master mm -hmm. uh, into the uh, to a merchant who was the merchant of a king over in Indo-Parthia. Parthia, okay? okay? So that's the northern part of India. Okay. So remember they landed and then they took an 1100 mile trek up to Texilla, right, right. not Texas, but Texilla. But it's as big <laughs> as Texas. Yes, it's bigger. <laughs> um, and so that's called Indio Perthia, all right? Okay. So the scholars believe that Thomas had two missions to India. Okay. One in the northern part, which is the Indo Perthia. That's where they and, built the, well, the built the mansion. Temple, mansion, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> the castle, whatever it was, the palace. Yeah, the palace. You know. And the second one, um, which occurred. 10 years later oh. was to the southern part of India. Because if you remember, the first time he went over, first he went to the southern part. Yeah. They stayed there for a couple of days. He met a few people, got into a Jewish community, made a couple of, con I don't want to call them converts, but disciples, you know, not that he had time to disciple, but introduced right. them to Yeshua, the Holy Spirit, um, all of that within the Jewish community. That's important to okay. note, okay? within the Jewish community. So it's believed that his second journey, he went back to those, the southern tip, okay? So this is really interesting. Yes. Did he come from the north and go down, or did he go back to no, Jerusalem no, and he come went back? back to Jerusalem okay. and he came back. Yes, so this was, would be his second trip. So it's believed that in the year 50 to 51, he returned to Jerusalem. Okay. Okay, after his seven to eight year um, trip, to the northern part. Okay. Okay. And this is kind of an important oh. side note. So is this kind of during the time of Paul's? And yes. This is during so that he, time. Yes. Okay. So around 50 to 51, he would have probably met up with Paul. Okay. And I think it's very important that um, that probably would have happened because when he returns to the southern part, he's primarily bringing in the Gentiles. Oh, oh, you know, that does so make, yeah. It would it would definitely make sense that the Lord would have them cross paths, and it's believed right. that they did. But there's no documentation to say that that happened. Right. All right. According to documentation, he arrived in South India in 52 CE. It would so he set out in the spring of 51. It is believed. Now it doesn't take that long to get over there, but he was shipwrecked on a small island called Socotra. And Socotra... Was it at Socot? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it was in the spring. Because remember, uh, we, we did show this on the map last week, that it's the summer winds that will take you right. to India, and it's the fall winds that will bring you back. So he set out in the spring from Caesarea... Uh, over to Alexandria, down the trek, and then out for the summer <coughs> winds. Okay. But he was shipwrecked on Socotra, and that is a, a small island off of Ethiopia, just south of Arabia. Oh, wow. He didn't... All right, so he yeah, didn't get very far. far. <laughs> he didn't get very far, and that was very common to be shipwrecked because the monsoon winds are so high. And once you're shipwrecked there, nothing... Because the winds are so high, no ships can come in and out. So he was stuck there for almost a year because he had to wait for the, to the following year to be able to be pushed to out. To be pushed back out. Wow. So this island was very unique. Okay. okay. People who visited this island, it was considered a place where... People would come from all over, uh, from China, India, from the West to trade. Okay, okay. That was a vacation spot. No, no it wasn't a, a vacation market. spot, but a big marketplace. Oh my gosh! And so they were famous for two things. All right, I mean, you could get frankincense, um, myrrh, aloe, uh, different kinds of things. But the two most unique things that they were famous for were tortoise shell shells. No, oh, okay. All right, because they had any kind of tortoise you can imagine there. And they Lord use them for different things, including caskets. That's how big they were. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I know. That's <laughs> so a wealthy person. Yes. So tortoise shell, this red sap that came from a very unique tree called um, the dragon's blood tree. All right. Okay. And they use Hence this the red for sap. medicine, um, for dyes in clothing oh, and different things, and also for magic arts. 
All right, so it was very, yes, so it was very um, famous for that. And people who visited this island would say it's an alien island. You could see things on this island that you can't see anywhere else in the world. Well, what Veg a great Different place. vegetations, different types of things. What a great place to also introduce this that you can't see anywhere else. Yes. I mean, you know, only oh, in this yeah. world. <laughs> right, right, right. I think right. it's neat that he was there a whole year because that kept him from just making a convert into being able to disciple. So listen to how influential he was. Okay. In the 16th century, the Portuguese uh, conquered this island for Catholicism. Okay. Now, while it was still under Muslim rule, it wasn't under Islamic faith. Okay. Okay, so it was still ruled by a Muslim empire. Right. All right. But the Christian faith was the majority of... The, um, of the, the people island? of the island, and every single one of their names was Thomas. <laughs> Everyone. So was that seen All their like names a were part Thomas. of the faith? You know what I mean? Like they took the yes, name of the one the, that took the na the one that founded their faith. Sixteenth century. That's amazing. amazing. Yes. Now it's under Muslim rule, and if you were to go there today, you'd be like, so are you guys, are there any Thomases here? There's not, okay? But so now they're they all can... doubting Thomas. <laughs> yes. yes, that's right. <laughs> so now Thomas is the year 52. He's okay. been there a year. He's been discipling, obviously, long-lasting discipling. Yeah. And he has made it back to the southern part of India okay. in Malabar. And it's really interesting because on this map, you can see... There are seven cities that Thomas had influence over, and they were called the Seven Assemblies. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so this is very interesting, and it's making me think of the Decapitans. I'm not saying that right. The ten Greek cities during Messiah's time, and the guy, the lunatic, wants to go with them, and he's like, no, no, stay oh, here. Oh, yeah, yeah, on the and other then, side. Yeah, of and then he literally, Sidelli. the lunatic evangelizes so that when Messiah comes back, all the people come already knowing who he is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, that was 10, and now we have seven. Right, Those right. are some numbers that we see all through. I know. Actually, I say there's seven. You, you see that there's seven, and then there's this 7.5. And I don't understand it because it never explains, and I can't find anything that explains, but it said that he has seven and a half congregations. I have no idea. I, I, Did, I don't know. One split? I don't know. Oh, no, so seven crazy. and a half. But there's this one town that you see here at the tip, and it is the 7.5. So I don't really understand the half congregation. But anyway, we're not going to dwell on that. Maybe one is the first Thomas and the second Thomas. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, what's interesting about these seven cities that Thomas, he didn't establish the cities. He established assemblies within okay. each of these seven. All right, but what's interesting is even to this day, they call themselves the Nazarenes. Oh, okay. They're called They're called Mar Toma, which and... Toma as in Thomas? Thomas okay. as in Thomas. That's the, ty that's the denomination sect, okay. all right? denominational sect is called Mar Tama, and they also refer to themselves as the Nazarenes. All right, so when he, when he arrived, there were different castes. Is okay. that what they're called? Yes, castes. yes. India has okay. castes. Right. All right, so, and yes, you know. mm -hmm. there are different castes, and I'm going to go through the um, four, because when Thomas went over, they all believed the Hindu religion is what they were, and they all believed that they all originated from one man. But they didn't all originate from a whole man. They originated from different parts of the man. All right? Oh, so That's interesting. Yeah. So the, the, the Brahmins were the head. They were the elite, and they were the priests in all the Hindu um, okay. uh, uh, temples. Okay. All right? And they um, believe that they originated from the head of okay. the man. All right. And then you have the, the Kishtraya, and they were the warriors and the kings. Okay. They were the royalty, and they were the warriors, and they believe that they um, originated from the arms. Then you have the Vashyas, and they were the merchants and agriculture, and they originated from the thighs. And then you have the, the Shudras. And they were the blue collar. They originated from the feet. And anyone lower than those four were from the bottom of his feet. Okay. So. the f it That's is some big feet. If everybody else is the bottom of the feet. Big feet. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. 
Big feet, <laughs> Big feet to fill. Big feet to fill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's believed that his first convert was a was from the Brahmins, which I find is interesting because yeah. that's the head yeah. Yeah. and it's the priest. So if you can change the the leadership. Hindu, yeah, the leadership, then it'll trickle down to everyone else. And let's see. Um, and are these the ones that were on the island, or these are? These are the ones that are in India when he oh, was These are back. in India. Okay. Yeah. Right. He's left Same the shape. island. It's it's 52 and later. Okay. All right. And it's believed, I'll just go ahead and say this, that Thomas died in oh, India. India. Oh, that he okay. stayed there until his death. Wow. All right. And there are Talk shrines and churches built uh, to show that. It's believed that his first convert was a man named Niranam. And he was he called himself Thomas. Uh, Malachiya, and that's the Malachiya is his family name, okay. and then Thomas was his spiritual leaders. name, yeah. spiritual leader's name, and uh, Thomas gave him the uh, title of Rambam, Ramban, Ramban, which means rabbi, right? And um, he has a song that's famous to this day, and it's called uh, the Ramban song. So I said all that to say this: that's Ma- not who. Ramban is no. Okay, I'll just no, no, say because no. I don't it remember just him being Indian. Mm-mm. Okay, and I think that's Rambam. There's two. Oh, okay, well, this is just and then a title. Ramban is anyway. Blah, blah, blah. Ramban gotcha. is just a title because there, when you go through and you study it, there are hundreds of right. Rambans. Ramban. Gotcha. Yeah, Ramban of this well, town and this town and this town. But they say mention and everybody knows which one it is right he's like right. from spain or i don't know which one right anyway, I was but like, this yeah. this guy wrote a song okay and most of what we have of thomas's life over in india comes from this song that was passed down and okay, finally written cool. down in the 16th century how can yes. you deny that in the 16th century the song was written and it was um it, they said that they have been saying this song for you know uh 1,000 to 1,500 years, gotcha. you know. So I'm like, oh, that is really cool. Is cool. So scholars today don't don't look at it as fact because they say over the years they've embellished and they've done yeah. this. And if you've listened to the song, you'd be like, oh, yeah, they probably did embellish a little bit, especially with some <laughs> of the miracles. <laughs> but um, it really does give a picture of Thomas's life. All right, so everything after that that we know that he did comes from this particular song and i just wanted to talk about speaking of the miracles a couple of the miracles that are within this song that said happen okay first was um there is the goddess Kali um in cranganore and on the map that's just one of the cities okay. and she is called uh Kali means the black one she's a forearm goddess um and every year they would draw lots to see who was going to which family the child sacrifice would come from okay so this particular year the lot fell to a man or a child five years old called Kanjan, and he was a local of a king a raha mm-hmm. that's what they were called mm-hmm. rahas a king and so thomas had was on the other side of india in malapur yes in malapur and Someone sent word to him, hey, you know, can you please come help us? This boy is going to be sacrificed. So he went all the way back, and I'm thinking, that's a long way. But anyway, it's part of the song, so we're going to talk about it. And he goes all the way back, and he prays over the child, and he tells the family, if you will believe in Yeshua the Messiah, I know my God will heal you, I mean, will save this boy. And so they said, we will not believe in Yeshua the Messiah until he saves this boy, you know. And so he said, okay, so he took the child and he prayed over him. And the, the um, story goes that he baptized him, which doesn't go along with how they do things. Uh, but, but it does how certain religions do. Yes, yes. Gotcha. So um, they, they allowed the priest to take the child and they went into this temple. It was a big ceremony. They had front row seats. Uh, and then there was this long chamber hallway that they went into, and there was a room in the back where the goddess Callie was. And they were supposed to sacrifice the child before the goddess. Well, after 
a long time. They're like, we don't know what happened. So they went in and the child was standing there smiling and the priest was nowhere to be found. So the whole family was converted. Not only the family, but the entire town was converted. And they did away with the child's sacrifice. And that was the end of that. And the little boy became the youngest disciple. And his name was changed to Kepha. Oh, interesting. What? After yeah. his friend. Yeah. Okay. I want to talk about one more miracle. Um, and that was in Pollyur. And when it is said that when he, <clears throat> when Thomas landed in Pollyur, he saw four worshipers and they were part of the Brahmins, the okay. priests. The and they were in water and they were scooping up water and throwing it up into the sky and chanting, uh, praises to this God and throwing it up and throwing it over and over. And Thomas was like, what are you guys doing? And he, they said, we are giving water to the gods. They're thirsty. And he said, well, wouldn't the water disappear if you were giving water to the gods? You know, but it's just coming right back down and landing. I don't see any water disappearing. And yeah, they're not taking it. <clears throat> and and uh, so Thomas said, let me show you what the living God does with water. So he took, scooped up the water, threw it in the air, and it suspended in the air until Thomas said, all right, Lord, we want our water back. And then he gave it back. And the, it says that they were just like, they couldn't believe it. So they denounced all the other gods and they worshiped the true living God and they became disciples of Thomas. So that's another one of the miracles I just wanted to, you know, it's cool. Yeah. Let you know about. All right. So again, like we saw with Paul, the Lord's using the situation. Things that they're to, familiar with to reach draw them. them in. Right. Yes. And then once they're drawn in, then they can learn the ways. Right. He never becomes something familiar incorrectly to them he just uses what they have right yeah yeah. to yeah. help pull them in to learn how yeah, to he made the water correct. if he wants to suspend exactly. it exactly i'm not saying it happened or didn't but it's part of that song yeah so it's well, something that, that, that they really believe and that doesn't in any way contradict scripture right. so why not right absolutely i mean doesn't it line up with genesis day two yes and he separated it's, the water you. from the water <laughs> Look, he turned time backwards during the battle exactly. with joshua why can't he hold the water for exactly. a few minutes right 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 all right so all the Martama Christians today trace their origins back to one of these seven and a half assemblies along the coast. Okay, so okay. anywhere in India you go, if they're a Christian, they say, oh, we're from, and they'll name one of those cities. All right, so I want to give you a little history um, that happened after Thomas's death. So in the third century, the Gnostics came in okay. and started introducing a lot of false false things but they eventually hooked themselves with the syriac eastern christians so the eastern orthodox i think okay. is more so they took on a lot of their traditions and um in the 16th century is when the portuguese conquered them for catholicism okay. all right so even today oh, oh wait a minute so. and so in the 20 the 19th and the 20th centuries other denominations started trickling in and introducing them to the Baptist way and the Methodist way. So the they've gone all these years basically a set of Judaism, uh -huh. Christianity mm -hmm. as its roots. So they literally were unaffected. This is the way they walked until the yes. 15th or 16th century? Until the, yes, until the... What? Well, the Syriac church came in probably around the 4th or 5th after the Gnostics. Okay. And they affected well, okay. them. Yeah. Greatly, I forgot you did say Gnostics. But the, Catholic, the Catholicism, they did not look Catholic until right. then. But when the Catholics came in, they really put, they put all the crosses up. And they did all of the um, things that today people say, oh, yeah, Thomas put these crosses here. But he didn't. That didn't come until right. the 16th century. Gotcha. You know. And so today the, the um, Mar Thomas Christians are broke up into the Eastern Orthodox Catholicism and Protestantism. Okay. But from what I understand, most of them still hold to a lot of the Jewish traditions like Passover, unleavened bread, and they still marry under canopies. They still have a lot of the really neat Jewish traditions. Yeah. Well, and that, that would be their would, traditions. I mean, they've yes. had it for so many years. Right. They're like, we're not giving this part up. Isn't that funny? Yes. Because they're like, no, 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 this is our culture, cultural traditions, but yet it's Jewish. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so, from their roots. Right. So no matter who's conquered them and introduced their ways, they've still held to these. So you can see how the foundation yeah. started from 
Judaism. I love it. Right. All right. And then, and then like I said before, according to the song, uh, Thomas went to Malapur, which is on the other side. Actually, the song says he went to China, but there's no evidence that he was in China. But Malapur holds two hills where they say that he died. Uh, like in between them or something? No, there's, yeah, like there's some say oh, over oh, hill on this hill, hill and gotcha. some say, no, this is where he died. And one of them is really interesting because as the, uh, the folklore goes, as the story goes, he would sit on a rock and preach to everyone and teach. And if they got thirsty, there was a rock that he would strike and water would come out and give them water. And they all say this. And I'm like, interesting. Huh, that is interesting. And I think they probably are just getting the stories that he yeah. was telling them, the preaching he was telling right, them right. mixed up with As what actually happened. About those just striking right. out. Yeah. That's what I would think. Because yeah. why would you strike a rock to get and not speak to it yeah. <laughs> if Messiah is already right. coming? You know? Oh my gosh. So anyway, that's so that, that was what I thought when I heard it. But so that is the history of Thomas and his endeavors and all of his nice little adventures that he had. And uh, yeah, that's you know, pretty much it. You know, just so not the striking walk. Yeah, I can see though where it would still be attributed on this point. He struck the rock. He provided living water for them. Uh -huh. Like Yeshua says, I'm yeah. living water. He's providing living water for them in which they were, their thirst was quenched. Yeah. Kind of yeah. him doing the same thing that Messiah did mm -hmm. with Lady of the Well and that being attributed to him. Right. So. right. Yeah. I just thought it was really interesting. It is interesting. All right. So next week we will be back in Acts. And we'll be in Leviticus. Yeah. So we'll be scripture all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and we will see you next week. Shalom. Shalom.